Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and today in this video of XUnit with Selenium video series, we are going to talk about testing for the failures or testing for expecting the failure to happen. So for example, in many of our Selenium tests, we might have seen that the test will fail or the test uh, should fail if this particular element doesn't really exist in Selenium. For example, in this particular case, you can see that we are trying to do a login and then we are trying to perform a send keys of username and password. And then we are expecting this button to exist so that I can click to perform a login operation. But what if this particular uh, button for some reason doesn't really exist, then my test should actually uh, doesn't really it shouldn't be failing but it should tell me that this particular uh, control doesn't really exist the test should pass because that's what I'm expecting if this particular control is not of this particular ID so that's what I really mean so it's kind of a not equal to scenarios that we should be worried about so for example the application has the dot btn default by default but if for some reason if there is a button change happened then my test shouldn't be failing rather it should tell by throwing me an exception that no such element exception and i'm expecting that no such element exception to happen so this is what is the case but it won't be much applicable for selenium test per se if you're doing an api testing those uh, exceptions or something which is mattered for example if you're doing an api testing and if you do a bulk data insert onto an api then that api should return as some sort of bad response exception something like that and we expect that exception to happen so in api case it's very very applicable but in selenium it is not that worth it but still that's what we are going to be testing and see how it actually can be achieved and you can extend the same thing for the api testing if you want to so how to do that so in order to achieve this we are going to use what is called as assert dot throws method so there is something called as assert dot throws of x unit so if you just hover over here you can see that this assert.throws is coming from the x unit sdk's throws exception so probably we have covered almost all the different things that is available within the x unit the x unit's assertion and the x unit sdk's as well so the throws sdk help us to achieve certain operation for example if i am expecting like no such element exception from the selenium then i can do that as well so for example you can see i can use a lambda expression and let's do this i'm going to cut this code paste it over here uh, like this so this is going to be throwing me an exception i'm just going to do an exception like that i'm going to capture that information for me uh, and so it doesn't really shows me what i'm trying to do and once i get this exception then i need to do an assertions of uh, probably not equals but let's say contains uh, and I know that in Selenium they always give us a message as something like no such uh, element uh, blah 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 like unable to locate like that yeah uh, that's what my exceptions uh, message should be so I'm gonna say exception dot message should be this one so this is what I'm expecting to happen but now if I run this test this test is probably gonna fail because the the button that we are looking for is already there and it is already existing so if I run this test you could see that this all the tests are gonna eventually fail which is all right because we know that these button the, uh, the login uh, btn is already there so the test is gonna fail which is of no wonder but if you see the error here it says that this exception is not being thrown, which is all right. But if I change the button, something like BTN defaults, something like that, and now if I try running this test, all the tests are gonna pass because there is gonna be an exception saying no such element exception, and the test is gonna get that, and then it's gonna throw us an exception message, and then the test is gonna pass, see, which is cool. So this is how we could test for the failure. Uh, but this test for the failure is not very applicable for Selenium, even though we could able to use this in some cases. Uh, but it is very applicable while we do API testings and stuff. That's it, guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this short video. Meet you in our next video with fluent assertions.